Hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Happy first Thursday of November, everybody. Um, How's it going? It's good. I have, I was just saying in our like little side chat here, I have Chipotle in my teeth. So I'm really sorry. In advance. Um, I might <laughs> start the camera so you can see it. Know, yeah. The rest of us are just jealous. We're not embarrassed right. or anything. We're jealous. Delicious. I still have a few chips left to keep me going. So <laughs> we're in good shape. But yeah, it's uh it's Thursday, it's November 5th. Um, it's been an exhausting week for many people. Uh, so Why? something uh, going on. November, November things, you know. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. I don't know, but uh, hopefully this will be a fun hour for everybody to get your mind off of things and look at some blogs. Dave has got some amazing PRs today, and we have a special guest here. You might have heard of Blazamarin. Uh, I'm Maddie. I'm a PM on the Xamarin team. Dave, you want to introduce yourself and then Alan, you can introduce yourself and we'll kick right in. Also a PM on the Xamarin team. And uh, I am, I'm in the guacamole with chips camp from Mm. Chipotle. Are you guacamole or queso? I'm guac, but in the bowl, not separate. Okay. Alon, how about you? Um, how, How am I doing or what do I order at Chipotle? Yeah. Well, I think the Chipotle is probably the more important question. Um, I'll basically get any burrito that they have fully loaded with everything except for sour cream, which um, don't even get me started with sour cream. It's it's it's, it's not for me. Hot take. Uh, I, I'm with you as well. I mean, the, it's all in the name, sour. No, I know. No. Oh, so mm. so no. You can have. I'll scrape it off, and you can. All right. I'll put, I'll use it on my chips. It's good. That's my treat. That's if I'm, if I've been very good with food that week, I'll get sour cream in my Chipotle. Um, (sighs) Dylan, why don't you introduce yourself real quick? So everybody knows who you are if they don't already, because you're kind of a celeb, but yeah, I mean, I assume everybody knows me, but um, just in case somebody, I don't know, woke up after a a, a very long uh, nap. uh, I'm Elon Lipton and uh, thank you, uh, Maddie and uh, David for having me on the show today. I'm an engineer on the .NET team. I work with the Xamarin team and with the Blazor team. And I'm going to show some cool stuff today about how we can use those together. Exciting. And we're already making people hungry, too. That's good. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Um, all right. I'm going to put up the links. Show. Nice. That's where all your links are. I'm going to share my screen. Add. Everything's nice. It's all scaling. So I was saying, this is maybe the first time that I'm going to get through a community stand-up without royally screwing up StreamYard somehow. I'm very excited. But uh, this is your usual links here. Um, we got a bunch of stuff. The first 10 or so are the blogs. And we got a bunch of PRs that Dave will talk to us about. And I put some of the mobile blazer binding stuff towards the bottom if you're interested in clicking ahead on that. Um, first and foremost, guess what's next week? Guess what's next .NET Conf, look at this background. They have free virtual swag this year. They have wallpapers. They have uh, phone wallpapers. <laughs> I think 3D printing things. I don't know. I, don't know. I was very excited. So um, very exciting. I, there will be Xamarin in the keynote, supposedly. Supposedly? Uh, you should know all about it. We should. <laughs> we'll see. Um, there will be Xamarin day one. I think Xamarin day two, there will be Xamarin day three. Lots of our community members, actually. I just looked at the agenda the other day. Oh my gosh, I think Luis is on there, Veronica's on there. I was like, this is gonna be great. I'm very excited. And I'm, I'm doing the tweet board during a couple of those. So we'll have a good time. Um, yeah, that's the big thing this month. But of course, always a bunch of virtual user groups, um, the Xamarin podcast with Matt and James, all the things. Jamie's wonderful blog that she does for us every month. And this month she was like, hey, what's the plan for community stand-up? And I was like, oh my gosh, it's our <laughs> the beginning of November. We should really figure that out. So it's going to be a good time. Um, that net content is next Tuesday through Thursday. All hours of the day, recorded, live stream, all the things. They're doing a great job planning it. I'm very excited. Um, so make sure you catch what you can catch on that. Ooh, all right. This one came, I think, in like right at the last community stand-up. But it's very cool. It's Apple CarPlay with a Xamarin app. I was like, nice. So um, I believe, let me double check the name here. Yeah, so there's Johan here. Um, it has an app that he works on that's a, a radio app. And he decided to just make it work for CarPlay. 
with Xamarin. So pretty cool. Um, wasn't a ton of code. A um, little bit of like platform specific stuff in the app delegate, nothing too crazy. Um, but it, it just pretty much, you know, shows what's playing. And if you change stations, like it'll reload the stations. Pretty cool stuff. Super simple. I didn't, I have, I have not even thought of Android Auto or CarPlay for Xamarin stuff before. So I don't know why I, that never came across my mind, but. Well, you're going to, you're going to need to figure out how to uh, get Xamarin onto your Tesla, I guess, apparently at some point. Right? I know I joined the cult. I'm very embarrassed. <laughs> I think Teslas are horribly ugly, but it was time we needed a new car and the model Y is really nice. Yeah. So, oh, they're gorgeous. I it's on my mind because I I just rented one when I uh, went on my anniversary trip with my wife, and uh, it was it was a blast. But I do have uh, Apple uh, CarPlay or Apple Apple Car. What is it? Apple CarPlay. CarPlay, Apple? CarPlay and Android Auto. Yeah. Uh, on my uh, on on my Atlas, and uh, it's awesome to use. And yeah, Xamarin works there. Um, Xamarin works on Apple TV as well. And those are pretty easy targets to get to with Xamarin. Um, they're very iOS. Um, so there's not much extra work or extra, you know, uh, architectures or things like that. So, um, totally easy. Watch OS, different story, <laughs> but, uh, Apple TV CarPlay. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Sweet. And thank you. I think Cliff was the one who just reminded me to put the links in the chat. So I did that as well. Um, yeah, very exciting. Very exciting stuff. Love a good car play. All right. Uh, this is, I got this as an email. So I can't remember who emailed us to me. This is all from the beginning of the month. Um, this is an app called Migraine X or Weather, Weather X, I think it's been turned into by um, Brad something. And um, it, it, I guess his wife came up with this idea. But I, so I get migraines. Fun fact. Not really fun fact, but it's a fact. Um, and I have always assumed they had something to do with barometric pressure changing, but that's just what the, the internet tells me. So I never really like did anything about it. I was just like, oh, this stinks. Here's some Tylenol, acetaminophen, whatever it is, uh, other places in the world. Um, but we actually have a Xamarin developer who I, I don't know if you work for Cirrus Healthcare, please feel free if you're watching to correct me in the chat. Um, but they have these earplugs that you plug in your ears when the barometric pressure is about to change and it helps prevent the pressure from screwing up your like migraines from causing a migraine. So this app, it's very pretty. That's important, but it tells you, it gives you an alert basically like, Hey, the weather's going to change soon. You should put in your earplugs. So I didn't buy the earplugs, but I did get the app and I don't know if it's a placebo effect that every time it said I was going to get a migraine, I kind of got a headache. It very well might be, but it's a really good looking app. It's super fast. It's so weather, weather X is the one you want. I can open this. Um, looks like this. It's, I mean, look at this, Dave. I know you're going to love these controls. I mean, look, look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Xamarin Forms. Yes. So, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Um, this is the blog post about it on true geek, but you know, it's in the, it's in the store as I just showed. It's all that stuff. All right. Ooh, preparing to create a Xamarin Android binding library. So this has been on our minds lately um, as all of the things continue to update all of the things. So it's, it's just that time of year, everyone's pushing updates, Android. I know Crashlytics just got, but there's a bunch of stuff. So people have been trying to bind more things. Um, and so John's doing a series of four articles here where he's gonna go through preparing, creating, testing, and publishing binding libraries, which I think is great. Um, there is a lot that we do on the team to make bindings easier. We have some really cool ideas that we're working on that we're kind of marinating. But in the meantime, if you have never done a binding before, I think it's a good experience. And then you can go in and complain about how much you dislike it, and then we'll fix it for you. So John's blog is a good one to follow just to kind of prepare, you know, get everything set up when it comes to Android Studio and all that. Oh, Sharpnado, a classic. They got new tabs and they have badges, very exciting. So badge view and UWP support um, and bindable layout, pretty much it. I, I'm a huge Sharpnado person. I think we show it on all the standups. There's usually a release like every month, but um, yeah, it's it's sharpnado.presentation is kind of gonna go away. It's gonna be a whole bunch of different little things now, very exciting. 
Um, but then there's also badges on the tab. So this is good. I like badges. I like to know exactly how many emails I'm ignoring at any given point. So silly bottom tabs page. So yeah, great job, Sharpnado, as always. Um, all right. Alamir, I just saw you in the chat. Hold on. Hi. You have a blog on today. Nice blog. I liked it a lot. Custom app actions in Xamarin Forms apps. Um, using Xamarin Essentials. So this is what a custom app action is. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I've had this on Android forever. I'm an Android user. Just got my Pixel 5. Um, we have been able to hold on our app and do things with it for you know, multiple Androids now, but the iPhone got it. So now it's a thing that everybody has and everybody wants to use, but you can do it with Xamarin Essentials, cross-platform, all that love. Um, very exciting. I use it all the time when I want to like quickly just like add a calendar event or something. Um, super easy. I spell favorites wrong. Sorry, I live in the US. There's no you here. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Kidding. Um, yes. So very exciting. I, I think there was also like a, I don't know if James, someone wrote a blog on the Xamarin blog that was pretty good about this. And then I, I saw Amir's and I was like, oh, this, this is nice too. Cause it's got the iOS side, Xamarin essentials. All right. Um, battery efficient background time-based location updates. So Randy hit us with a big title this week, but uh, this diagram sums it up pretty well. Your location's got to update at a somewhat regular interval and you're trying not to drain the battery because there's nothing more annoying than your phone dying because it's pulling your location all the time. Um, so this is cool. This one's about, you know, specifically iOS, getting the permissions in, timers, and then that's it, you know? Pretty pretty simple stuff. Um, there's some cool references here too. I saw a background repeating timer in Swift. So you can kind of go see the native implementation. Um, and I'm looking at what dispatch source timer actually is and all the async words. I don't know. They're all, my dog is also uh, waking up from his nap. So sorry in advance. I have two more, two more and then I'll mute and go back to my chips. Uh, all right, this headline, Charlene really wrecked me with this one. Also happy birthday, Charlene. I think it was just a few days ago. I don't know if you're here today. I saw on Twitter. Um, stop doing is visible, true, false. This GIF is going to like make me pass out because it's flashing really quick. But I always do is visible, true, false. Because <laughs> I'm really lazy. So uh, she goes through and explains alternatives to do that. Um, that maybe are a little bit more stable, a little bit easier to interact with in different ways. Triggers. Something that David's been talking about forever that I continue to ignore to implement in most of my apps because I just do it is visible. Um, control templates, carousel views. Whew. Um, very fun. I love the new carousel view. I've been playing around with Xamarin Forms 5. But yeah, so definitely check this out if you're like me and you just are like, is visible true? And then you set it in the code behind and then it kind of doesn't work sometimes and you're wondering why. Charlotte has helped you. She's done this for you. And the Telerik blog. So Leah Marie, best Xamarin Forms app examples on the market. So I actually learned some new ones from this. I didn't know about uh, quite a few of these. So we have a list kind of that we keep just in our heads of apps that we know. And we have our customer slide, but um, these are some really good looking apps that Leo Marie's found in the app store or the Google Play store uh, that are built with Xamarin Forms or Xamarin. I think Xamarin Forms. Yes, they're all Xamarin Forms. So this one's, I think, sales, yep. Weather, specifically for the Aussies, it has to be an Australian weather app. Can't have can't have everyone mixing that up. Um, the tube mate, I love this one. So <laughs> I have been to London maybe twice and both times I was very confused, but this is really helpful um, or it could be really helpful. Some Roman era bike tours, this one's on iOS and then a shuffleboard, games. Xamarin Forms games, pretty cool stuff. Um, and she, she actually got this one from builtwith.net, which is a great website, which you can go see projects built with .net, um, including not just Xamarin, but .net framework, .net core, all that stuff. So um, yeah, I'm gonna unshare my screen, bye. <laughs> and uh, Dave, let me know when you want me to put yours up. Yeah, uh, go ahead. All right. Um, so definitely everybody Wait. should uh, be putting your apps onto the uh, builtwith.net website. Um, I wanted to start off with this one from Hussein because he reached out 
because he's super excited. And he's been working on this segmented control for a while. Um, uh, pretty much ever since uh, iOS came out with a whole new segmented view. And uh, he has moved it over to the community toolkit. So, and of course, you got to have the, what's this guy's name from Fresh Carl Prince? Carlton. Carlton? All right. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Well, you know, I, I was, yeah. Like my younger brother probably watched that show a lot. I didn't watch Of course, that. I'll probably be wrong. And his name is like no, I Charles, think Charlton or something. <laughs> Um, but you can see here, uh, iOS, Android, you get the native look and feel um, on each of them. And it is in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So we are actually going to spend a lot of time today. Um, I have a lot of tabs open. I might skip through some of these. But uh, the Xamarin Community Toolkit is on fire and fuego um, with lots of activity. Of course, it's been Hacktoberfest. The Xamarin Forms repo also got a lot of activity. Um, but of course, uh, the majority of that work right now is stabilization bug fixes. So um, all welcome and super excited to have those. Uh, but I thought that today would be a little more interesting to look at what's happening in the community toolkit. So this is one that uh, I immediately uh, got excited about because I have often wanted to add a tint color uh, to my icons. And this uh, little effect helps you to do that. And uh, to uh, illustrate this, let me see here, boop, 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 skipping over to my apps. Um, so there is a wonderful demo uh, sample in the repository for the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Steven Thavison put this together. It's beautiful. Um, let's see here. So this is an effect. So we'll go into the effects and it is the uh, tint color effect. So look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? You get your nice icons in whatever color you want it to be, because if you're using a font icon, uh, you don't always, you can't always easily do that. But this works with images. You can see it's using an image control, an image button control, and it's tinting whatever that icon is, uh, an image, obviously. So that's, that's really cool. Nice I was actually struggling with that on uh, Friday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's tons of really, really good stuff in here. You can see this one's already been merged, uh, so you can use that one today. Merged um, one day after I needed it. Thanks. One day after, yes. Well, you know, you can always refactor. You can always refactor. Um, let's see here. So uh, Vladislav continues to add functionality to the snack bar that he introduced. And so uh, snack bars are in, toasts are in, all kinds of little things like that. So if we come back over here, and I believe this is down in the views, if I remember correctly. Uh, let's see here. Range, camera, expander, snack bar toasts. Um, so <laughs> if you weren't hungry before and, and you happen to like, uh, candy bars or, uh, if you're a big toast fan, so you get the toast, it goes away has a timeout, um, snack bars come up like this. You can add actions to them. Now, these are obviously uh, showing long strings of text and you can put whatever you want in these things. Um, so it's all fully cross platform stuff, very easy to style and add your own content. Very nice. So thank you, Vladislav, for that and continuing to improve it. Uh, Andre uh, Misjukovic, who uh, he and uh, Pedro and several others have been very active on the, on the repository. Here's Pedro. Um, maintaining this, uh, keeping PRs and issues moving forward, very active, in addition to Javier and Gerald from the Microsoft team. Um, so thank you very much for that. Uh, big shout out to you guys. And so this is a range slider, um, which is exactly what you would expect. So if we come over here and go back into views, sorry about that. And there's range slider. So oh, look at that. You can do this and then you can change your thumb size. And what's pretty slick about this one, because it's a it's a cross-platform control, if I come over here, I've got the same thing running in UWP. Um, and I can, did I miss it? Range slider. So here's the exact same thing running in UWP. Isn't that nice? Everybody's so excited. Y'all are- Wow, you know what would be really cool, David? Mm. If you could hot reload that. Oh, wait. You can, yes. UWP now supports hot reload um, using the new incremental for Xamarin Forms. 
<clears throat> so uh, make sure you're using the latest public previews, I believe, is where that sits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to turn it on, but it'll... Uh, right. It'll make it work. I was using it the other day. It was fun. As a matter of fact, I think I do have that version running, so I should probably show it. So tools, okay. options. <laughs> So you go to, yeah, nice searching. So we moved it. Now it's under debugging hot reload. Thank you, Dimitri, for that. And right. on the bottom, you want to go from full page to changes only. To nice. be able to use all, all of the Xamarin form stuff. And then yep. uh, up here at the top, UWP, including Xamarin forms. Dun, dun, I hear dun. Oh. Here's, We have a special yeah. guest here today. The, <laughs> the person who said two and a half years ago, we need hot reload. And yep. Made it all start. So you have them to thank for all of this. <laughs> At least two and a half years ago. And uh, it's not referenced here because I am running on Windows. Uh, but it should let you know that it works for Mac OS as well with Xamarin Forms. So you could totally be doing it with the Mac OS uh, community maintained back end. All right. I said I have a lot to get through, and I have a lot to get through. Let's see here. So uh, added old effects. Um, I was missing some of these effects, in particular the uh, no border effect, the no underline effect, because when I want to get my entries to look the same everywhere, it's really useful to have these um, and, and make my design look the same between Android and iOS. Kind of kind of brings it back to a, a default state, kind of like in, in web development, right, where you, you start off your CSS with the reset, you know, and it just kind of empties out all the browser defaults and anything else that might uh, get in your way. Um, so thank you for bringing those back to life. Axe Master from the UK. Nice, nice handle. I didn't even notice that before. Axe Master. <laughs> um, Steven Thavison uh, brought over his state squid. So we now have a state layout. I wanted to demo this one for you because this is awesome. Everybody should be using this, I think. It's really good user experience. So down here at the bottom of the views, we've got the state layout. And so the, the idea here is that uh, you have a loading state for some of your layouts. And then uh, you can have uh, different custom states. You can have an error state like this. Uh, you can have an empty state if no data comes back or, or for whatever reason. Uh, again, custom states, another custom state. Uh, so this is really easy, and I have some code here because uh, I pulled down the demo. And so you bring the nougat in, and then you get your namespaces. Um, and then you essentially just have a, a dictionary of the different states, and each of them takes whatever views you want to put into it. And uh, you're going to uh, bind to some state value and just cycle through them. So as you're requesting data from the server, you know, you're going to say, okay, my state's loading, the data binding takes care of that and, and displays the correct thing. So you know how you get those skeleton views and there's actually another nougat out there. I think it's actually called skeleton or, or something like that. Um, and, and state squid has been out for a while as well. I've used this in apps. I love it. Um, it gives a nice user experience. Uh, so people aren't seeing a blank screen while they're waiting for some data to load. And if you can make it look like the data that's going to be there, even better. All right. Dun, dun. Uh, so Vladislav added this one, which kind of reminds me of the old signature pad and things like that. But it's uh, basically a, a drawing canvas uh, with all the hooks you need to be able to do uh, simple drawing which is useful. We had something kind of like this we put into uh, the Xamarin TV app uh, when we uh, introduced the dual screen support and we had a kind of little sketch pad on one of the panes. We used, I believe, Skia Sharp for that. Um, and I do not believe this uses Skia. I think this is all native, so pretty cool. Um, a couple of things that have come over from the Xamarin Forms repository, camera is one of them. And uh, what I'm really excited about here, Lajesh, uh, has been adding uh, bug fixes, and uh, that's awesome. There's several other contributors that have done the same, especially for camera view, uh, because this one was done uh, by one of our internal team, and then uh, he moved on, and so it sat there and didn't really get any love in our repo. Um, but now that it's in the community toolkit, I love seeing that people are picking up on this, because uh, I, I feel like like 80% of the apps that I do need a camera. And I, I always end up you know, going to the other project and pulling over my custom renderers. With this, I don't need custom renderers. So I think that's awesome. Uh, 
Um, character validation. I mean, this is probably something that we're all doing on a pretty regular basis. Uh, you have a minimum, a maximum, you want to have upper cases only, or, you know, whatever your validation behavior is, uh, you can go ahead and add that into your app. Super easy to do. Um, so Morgan, thank you for that one. You can see there's just tons of really useful stuff in here. And then I'm not so sure how useful this one is, but it's super cool. Uh, it's a hex layout from Javier. So uh, custom layouts in Xamarin Forms are actually pretty pretty darn easy to do. Um, of course, we provide to you stack layout, which has horizontal and vertical. We give you a flex layout for Flexbox. Um, and then we give you a grid and, and absolute and relative. And did I miss any? Um, but, uh, but you can easily do this. As a matter of fact, our initial two-pane view for dual screen. There you go. Watch yeah. OS. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's pretty good <laughs> it's, for that. Yeah. It's been done. <laughs> it has been done. That looks Very nice. nice. I like that. And like uh, Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Pinterest layout is a staggered uh, layout. It's, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's probably the most difficult um, to do well. Uh, Android, I believe, provides a, a base layout, or there is one that's been implemented on Android out of the box, but uh, but iOS is uh, is not so straightforward. So we've been asked several times to to do something like that. Uh, if anybody has done a staggered lay layout list layout uh, in the Pinterest style, would love for you to contribute that. Uh, I know that I would use the heck out of it. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, another layout here. It's a doc layout. So if you want uh, views to dock to the right, to the left, to the top, et cetera, et cetera, um, that's pretty easily done. Thank you, Javier. I have a feeling Javier must have used these layouts in some application before and just uh, refactored them and brought them over. So I think that's really cool. Um, another thing that he has just done this morning, dun, dun, and I'm actually uh, using this in the .NET Conf demo for next week, um, but it is a cross-platform tab view. So I'll go ahead and scroll to the bottom of his screen because that's where it's going to show up. Go, go, go. And I pulled I pulled the samples just before he actually put this in here. So you can see that you get a tab at the bottom, I think, eventually. He skipped it last time. Nope. Oh, it just keeps going away. He tweeted it. You can go see it. Oh, maybe this is it. Okay. Yeah, you can see all the different tabs. Yeah, it makes it really easy to do the raise button tabs. You can make any of them just execute. Um, commands and things like that. So I'm using that in the .NET Conf demo that I'm building for next week. Fresh content. If y'all are sick and tired of seeing my personal finance app that I've been showing off with the really cool shadows and gradients, it's still a great, great design. But we're going to have something fresh for you to enjoy next week, inspired by Alon's demo. <laughs> um, Color theme property for the avatar view. So the avatar view is this, you know, kind of uh, if you don't have a picture, you get the initials um, in the circle. Otherwise, the picture loads in. Uh, but what if you want to have different color themes? I thought this was a really clever, nice, very useful thing. Uh, these are the kinds of things that just make your life a little bit easier. We hear from developers a lot. As a matter of fact, probably one of the top feedback items, uh, not probably, one of the top feedback items in the last survey that we did was help me make my designs more easily. Um, meaning, uh, by default, I want them to look good. And I'm not a designer. I, I just need something that looks good and has good user experience. Um, so. Uh, this this falls right into that category, giving you a nice uh, design with themes. So pretty slick. Thank you, Axmasta, for that one. Um, okay, Media Element is another one that came over from the Community Toolkit, originally contributed by Peter. And so he has picked right up where he left off and is fixing, fixing issues and adding functionality that was requested or needed. Um, so if you haven't uh, checked that out, it's in. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was playing videos with it today. We get to see our best friend in the whole world, James Monta Magno. Oh, look at that pause. Look at that. That's good. It's, like a, it's almost this like I knew what I was doing. Remember when James used to do his game, talks right? from Channel 9 with a beard? Now he has like long hair and no beard and is at home. Yes, yes. Uh, you're, and you're right, Alon. This, this, the, that's the one you know limitation of this video player. It only shows James. Yeah, right. that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's all we really need in life. 
Um, all right, a couple more. How are we doing on time? We're good. Uh, content button. So if you are a uh, UWP and perhaps even WPF, maybe WPF does this, um, buttons take any content you want to put into them. That's not the case for Android, iOS, uh, and Xamarin Forms because we're dealing with you know native controls and they, they don't do that. Um, so as soon as you put arbitrary content into a button, it's really no longer uh, a native button. It's a separate thing altogether. Um, so we can do that with control templates, and we've introduced that with the radio button. Um, but now uh, in the community toolkit, you can have more of what you would traditionally expect to be able to do with a content button. So as you can see here, uh, here's the content button. And then in the content, you, you know, uh, the sample here shows a grid, box view, stack layout, labels, whatever you want to put into it. Um, and at this point, uh, everything is described in the cross-platform layer. This is um, going to give you the same behavior that you would expect from a button, um, but with the content that you put in there. So if you have been jonesing for a content button, that's your that's your PR, and this is uh, it's not merged yet, but Level Five Coder has contributed. It's their first to Xamarin, so wonderful uh, Hacktoberfest introduction. Awesome. Um, all right, so that's the community toolkit. I wanted to highlight a few other things. I noticed that uh, over the past month, the Mac uh, iOS project, uh, which produces Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Mac has been receiving a lot of community contributions, which is just amazing. Um, so the, you know, the Android and the iOS teams primarily focus on bindings and you know, bringing the native SDKs to .NET developers. So it's, it's much more low level work um, and not so much the UI type things that you see from, from forms in the community toolkit. So it's a different, different uh, type of developer in my opinion. Um, it's, it's not, it's not me. That's, that's the, that's the key. It's not me. <laughs> uh, but awesome stuff happening over here. Really excited to see these community contributions. Um, in particular, you know, things like, uh, including compilation, uh, defaults for PDF image assets from, uh, Julius. Uh, let's see, was there anything else in here? I mean, like half of the stuff I don't even, you know, I can't even describe it. It's like too technical for me. Uh, so, but really cool, yeah. really cool stuff. I'm sure Alon understands all of this stuff. He's like, yeah, I absolutely know exactly what each of these are. I mean, I have an iPhone <laughs> and a MacBook Pro. Right? I mean, I recognize so. F sharp. I recognize that much. Mm. I recognize the word fixed issue. I've seen yes. that. Yes. That's, those, are the best, those are the best kind. Yeah. Um, uh, over in Essentials, there's some cool stuff happening. This got merged recently. So you've been able to share uh, using the Share API for a while. Um, but now you can do multiple files. Um, so that's cool. Rather than having to figure out how to bundle everything together, you throw a couple files at this guy and you can share it all. Um, so that's really nice. I feel like I, at the end of everything, I say that's really nice. Am I doing that? <laughs> that's I don't think so, but it's all really cool. nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's all really nice. Uh, screenshot on Mac OS. So you may not know, but uh, Essentials does support Mac OS APIs. Uh, so this is cool. And I, I, I love the description here. I thought this would be easy. Hours later. <laughs> honesty. It's so good. So refreshing. You know, we can, we can use a little more honesty in our lives these days. Um, so, but you got it working. So that's really cool. Um, you can take screenshots. And I believe they're working through yet uh, how this works on mobile platforms. I saw some comments down here. Hey, I'm having trouble getting it to work on, on Android and things like that. So, But hey, Mac OS is working, so that's really good. That's really nice. <laughs> that's really nice, Dave. <laughs> Isn't right. it? Now, this is one that uh, I immediately was like, oh, yeah, this is totally useful. Because um, I was just in, in an airport shudder to think, wearing my mask always and, uh, and sanitizing my hands every chance I got. But, uh, but you know, when you're going to scan your barcode or whatever, your boarding pass from your phone, you know, that, that sucker needs to be full brightness. So there's a good use case for why you want to uh, control brightness from within an app. Um, for that scenario, for other uh, scenarios, uh, maybe you've detected that they're in low light and you want to drop the, the brightness a little bit. So nice new API here that uh, enables you to do that from 
Mr. Nicklaus, Mr. Nick Bob Jeff. That's fun. <laughs> Nicklaus, thank you very much for that PR. That's good. And then, oh, this one's really exciting. I need to, I need to get ready for this one. So our good friend, perhaps best friend in the whole world, Frank Krueger, um, has uh, done a, a recent Twitch stream, I think just Sunday, where he was able to get Xamarin Forms running on Mac using Mac Catalyst. If you're not aware, Mac Catalyst is the uh, project from Apple that allows you to take your iOS application and run it as a desktop app. And they've been doing this with a number of their flagship apps uh, that you use on Mac OS. Um, in the future with Apple Silicon, uh, you will be able to actually take your iOS apps and run them native natively because they run on essentially the ARM architecture. Um, but for, for other use cases, Catalyst is a really interesting, useful way to do this because you not only get access to the vast majority, if not all of the iOS UI kit APIs and controls, uh, but you can additionally start utilizing the app kit, uh, which is the desktop specific stuff. So we've been doing a lot of internal research on this. I'm super excited to see that Frank did this and that he PR'd it to the Mono project. I mean, this is pretty epic. Apple themselves, uh, when they did uh, their latest announcement, did some kind of a PR to, to Mono. I don't remember if that all got merged and everything, but I remember them announcing that they'd done the, the open source contribution to Mono. Um, so this is really cool. I've got a tweet here that highlights it and shows it. And so here's where I need to give my frank homage, put my glasses on. Now I can't see anything, but I wanted to look with my hat my beard's not as good as Frank's, but he's my idol. I love Frank. I just got a screenshot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, if I had taken the, the if I had uh, not shaved my beard before going on my trip, I would have had a much better shot at looking more like Frank. Um, but that's really cool. Um, and so we are uh, internally. Uh, it's it's been on our roadmap as under consideration for what we're going to do with Mac Catalyst. Uh, we've been doing deeper investigations, talking to other teams uh, as well as customers about the interest in Catalyst and where we might take these things and if they're going to meet customer needs. And that's really what it all comes down to from a performance standpoint. Can you get to all the threading things you need to do? Can you get to all the desktop specific APIs and user experiences that you need? Um, is it going to meet needs? Are we going to have a dead end here? Um, is this where Apple is heading with things for uh, application development for the Mac OS ecosystem? And is it the most uh, sensible thing for Xamarin Forms developers in particular, where cross-platform is the primary concern? And uh, so far, all signs point to good news. And uh, so we'll be, we'll be announcing more about our plans in, in that area in the near future. So excited about that. I think many of you uh, who have expressed interest in Catalyst will also be excited as well. That's what I got, Maddie. That's what I got. Sweet. That was pretty good. That was pretty efficient. I looked at pretty the amount that you had and I was like, oh man, this one's going to go late today. I skipped a ton because it was October, Hacktoberfest. People mm. were coding for cotton. Um, I did, I did uh, pass over quite a few. So if you want to, uh, I definitely highly recommend going up to the community toolkit repo. Um, check that out, clone it, run the sample. I mean, it's, it's a really clean, easy to get navigate uh, project. Um, and you can actually grab the nightly feed right now. They're working their way towards the V1. I'm using it. I hope everybody else starts using it as well. Um, it's got a lot of activity, a lot of support. We are supporting it. Um, so feel confident in using it, please. Uh, especially as we are getting ready to release Xamarin Forms 5. And uh, that is going to be kind of a long-term stable release where we'll continue to fix bugs and ship that while we're working on the next iteration of things for .NET 6. Um, but, uh, but for new features, new controls, and things like that, you'll see us putting more of that into the community toolkit. Things can always come out of the toolkit into the core um, project, but uh, you know we can let them incubate over here and get used. So, all right, um, enough rambling about that. I want to hear what is this? What is this mobile Blazor bindings thing all about? Oh yeah, 
I know, remove. All right, Elon, do you want me to add your screen or you want to just chat for a minute? Um, yeah, go ahead and add the screen. That'd be perfect. Bam. Wow, wow, wow. Cool. Wow. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you, David. Uh, for anybody joining a little late, I'm Ilan Lipton, and uh, I want to talk a little bit today about mobile Blazor bindings, which is a technology that adapts Blazor, the Blazor UI pattern for use with Xamarin Forms. And I think probably most of the people here on the call uh, on the stream are uh, very aware of Xamarin and Xamarin Forms, and I wanted to show a few of the new things that we just shipped last week in mobile Blazor bindings preview five. Um, so um, the big thing that we added in Mobile Blazor Bindings Preview 5 last week was the ability to create unified Blazor UI using Blazor Web. And what does that mean? That means you could build part of your application using Blazor Web technology, so HTML, CSS, uh, and then C Sharp for all the interactivity of the, <clears throat> of the application, and you can run that on the web. You can run on Android, iOS, macOS, Windows, anywhere Xamarin Forms runs, plus also on the web, which is one thing that, at least from Microsoft, we don't have that yet. We don't have the ability to run Xamarin Forms apps on the web. Uh, with Blazor, you can do that. Um, I'm going to show some of the things from this blog post. If anybody wants to read more, learn where to install it, where to download, getting started, tutorials, documentation, uh, check out this blog post. Uh, I'm guessing we're going to have that link somewhere. Right, Matt? It is. It's on the screen. There, there it is. is. On the screen. It's also in the URL list, which I will post in the chat. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, click. Mm -hmm. Good job. Wait, um, it's backwards. It, it, <laughs> it. Oh, this is so hard to do. How do like weather people do this? Uh, years and years of practice. Uh, with my right hand. Wait, my, yeah, my right hand is my left hand. Anyway, <laughs> click, click that link um, or copy paste it, screenshot it, <clears throat> and you can read more. And um, what do I mean by sharing UI? <clears throat> Here is, um, I kind of dug my own grave, if you will. Um, I, made this, I made this screenshot in PowerPoint. It's not a real screenshot. I came up with an idea for a cat tracker. And so I built this uh, UI in PowerPoint. And then I pasted that UI in an iPhone screen, in a web browser screen, and in a WPF screen. And then I decided I actually have to go build it. And it turns out it was actually really easy. And I have the source code for this up on GitHub, and I'll share the link uh, with Maddie so we can um, get that on there. It's on my GitHub, github.com slash Elon. And there's a cat tracker demo repo on there, so you can download the source code for this. And let me, uh, let's just kind of dive into this. So the first thing I want to show is just running the web app. <clears throat> so this is, this is a web app. You can uh, search for a cat. So let's say I want to search for uh, domestic cats that are uh, brown, this is all completely fake data. Uh, this is a Blazor web app. You could do this today. You've always been able to do this. And I can hit track and hey, look, it, it found a bunch of cats with all kinds of names in all kinds of distances. And I could hit track again and search for, let's say I want uh, feral cats, wild cats. I don't know why you should be able to track those, but suppose you could. And I want black cats and track and there it found some other cats. So that's great. I built this little UI and I host it on the web. That's nothing special. It's you know, all been able to do it, but it's hosted in a Blazor web app that looks like any Blazor web app you might build. What's special about this is that this section here with this uh, cat graphic that I stole from PowerPoint um, and this uh, search UI, these text boxes, and there's even a little validator. So if I hit track, but I didn't enter a breed, mm -hmm. I get a little, a little validator, that's all built into Blazor. But what I did is I packaged this as a Razor class library. Let's see, does this work if I zoom in? What happens? What happens? What happens? Did the whole world just disappear? No, you're good. Oh, it's you actually working pretty well. There oh, you. did it work? Okay. Because it, it totally goes wacko on my screen. Okay. So here I have this cat tracker web UI library. This is a standard Razor class library that contains some static assets. It contains, uh, this is that image. So that's that cat image that I stole from PowerPoint. It contains some CSS that uses the background image and, and does a few things. And then it contains the cat tracker UI. This is a standard Blazor web UI with an edit form, validators. This is the UI you just saw running in the browser. And it has also the cat tracker logic. So I have a fancy cat tracker that all it does is it returns some random values for cats. And I, I got some cat popular, the top cat names from around the world. 
Uh, so some of these might be uh, Italian or Korean or Chinese. Um, American cats are, these are I think the top uh, five names or so for American cats. Uh, but you can go to Wikipedia if you want to find the popular cat names. That's a thing. And then I hosted that in a web app. So this is another Blazor web app where one of these pages here on the index page, I simply use that cat tracker API. Uh, that cat tracker UI, and it's all rendering HTML. Wonderful. And when the results are complete, it shows this track results uh, list that renders out, if I enter some data here and hit track, this is rendering just a, some HTML list. So that's, that's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. But I don't want just a web app. I also want to build native and hybrid applications for my all my users that have iPhones and iPads and Windows PCs and Mac PCs and Android uh, tablets and phones. Well, this is where mobile Blazor bindings comes in. <clears throat> With mobile Blazor bindings, you can author native UI using Blazor syntax. Uh, this is a project that I've been working on for just about a year now. Uh, it's available as an experimental preview. And you can use the same Xamarin Forms components, such as content view, stack layout, label, button, and so forth, set all their properties, all their events, and so forth, but using Blazor syntax. And when I run, let me run the Windows one here, just to show you what this looks like. This will look like a, this is running a Xamarin Forms with WPF, but it, it works all the same with everywhere you can run Xamarin Forms. So here's the Cat Tracker 9000. And my PC is extra slow right now because it's thinking a lot about Visual Studio and screen sharing. And here's that same exact web UI. It's not a copy of that web UI. It's the actual web UI, but running locally within this app. So if I search for, um, what's another breed? Breed 2. And I want purple cats. I can hit track. But now something a little bit different is going to happen. Whereas on the web, it was rendering a web UI. This is rendering native UI using Xamarin Forms right here. This is not HTML. This is native UI. And if I hit track again, I go back to this web UI that's hosted locally. There's no web server. It's running Blazor locally within the application. And I can search for orange cats. Or let's say I forgot to enter the breed and I get a validation error. It's running that same validation logic. Let's see. Look at all these amazing cat breeds I was searching for today. Um, and again, here I chose to render a native UI. Well, how is it doing that? Well, it's combining Blazor, mobile Blazor bindings for native using Xamarin Forms, and it's hosting that reusable web content inside this new Blazor Web View Control. So, in this Blazor Web View Control, I'm hosting my web UI. And in my web UI, here I have a page called index razor. Now, this is rendering HTML. Now, most of what it's doing is it's rendering that same exact cat tracker that's in my reusable razor class library. It's hosting it here. And when the track operation is complete, after I hit track and the search results are available, it sets the results on some global state. And when that global state uh, gets available, it renders more Xamarin Forms content using mobile Blazor binding. So here's a scroll view, stack that again. If you've done any Xamarin Forms, you've used all these controls before. Here's a label with some spans and so forth. Um, if there are no results, it says, uh, sorry, no cats match. Let's see, we can do that here. So let's say if I search for uh, red breed with orange color, it'll say, sorry, no cats match. And this is a native UI. And I could do the same on iOS here. If I do I got the simulator running on my Mac? Oh, if my Mac is didn't fall asleep over there. So the advantage here is you can have a reusable web UI that you can host on the web and on any device, because every device has can host web content. And here it is running on <clears throat> the iOS simulator. Again, the, those same uh, validators run. So if I want to find, um, let's say David is a, a, a breed and Saint. Uh, Oh, I can't press tab, apparently. That's not allowed with a, with a physical keyboard. Uh, with the St. Louis breed, oh, look, Kuro mm -hmm. is the cat of the David breed, St. Louis color, 91 uh, kilometers away. That's that's not too bad. That's uh, six, 60 miles for uh, uh, a little less than that, 55 miles 
away. So that's a short one hour drive. So <laughs> you can build that web UI just once, host it on the web, host it on any app you want, and then you can add as much native UI around that as well using Xamarin Forms with mobile Blazor bindings. Not only that, and one of the bits of feedback I got from our dear pal, uh, James, is if you want, you can host, let's see where that was. This same Blazor WebView is available as a standard Xamarin Forms component. So if you want to use XAML with Xamarin Forms, which is, of course, very popular, or C Sharp based UI with Xamarin Forms, those are both terrific options, very popular. You can still host that same HTML based Blazor Web UI inside that. And we actually have a sample of that on the mobile Blazor bindings repo, which is available in the Xamarin org on GitHub. So go to github.com slash Xamarin slash mobile Blazor bindings. There's uh, different samples there. One of them shows Blazor Web hosted inside mobile Blazor bindings, and one of them shows Blazor Web hosted inside XAML, Xamarin Forms. And there's there's the link right there in the chat. Um, let's see. Um, the, it's really important to note that the web content is running in proc, running in the same process as all the rest of the application. There's no web server. It's not doing any kind of remoting operation across different app domains or anything like that. So if you have objects, in fact, in this application, I do share objects between some web UI. So here I am injecting, this is a Blazor syntax for using dependency injection to get services. I'm injecting, this is my own custom uh, object, tracker state for the, the state of the cat tracker. I'm injecting it into this web UI based page. And I'm also using it inside this native page here. And tracker state, it's just an arbitrary object I made that, that stores the list of uh, cat tracker results. And the beautiful thing here is also uh, you're sharing state. So there's no serialization problem between any of these. Sometimes um, when you try to marshal things between web and native, you have to create serializable objects. It's, it's all doable, but it's a much bigger hassle. Here, you don't have to worry about that. Any state you have, any objects, transfers back and forth between them because it's literally sharing the same instances. Um, and you get all the Visual Studio debugging experience on Mac or on uh, Windows and run on all the devices. And you get to build your UI once. And the beautiful, other beautiful thing about, there's so many beautiful things. I think David's word, word is, that's nice. Mine is, this is beautiful. This is just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, great. So, <laughs> um, this Razor class library that I built here for the uh, cat tracker web UI, I could even ship it as a NuGet package. I could ship it as a NuGet package on NuGet.org and share with the world, or I could build it as a NuGet package and share within my company or team or organization. So if I have different teams building uh, the web app and another team building the Xamarin Forms based application for all the devices, they could still share that exact same UI and you host all the content inside it. So there's that little uh, cat backgrounds. I'm actually not using this file, but if you wanted to JavaScript interrupt, you could do that. Um, I could delete that file, it's not needed. Of course, now like everything's gonna break. I'm not, I don't need this file either. Um, let's see, what else did I wanna say about that? Um, some of the things that we're looking at in the future in mobile Blazor bindings are things, and actually David just asked me about the, uh, just an hour ago or so before we got started, is support for templated controls. So I know uh, we love talking about carousel view, and all the, it's a whole kind of family of controls that are templated, which are much more efficient to use in terms of memory, performance, rendering. Uh, those are not yet supported in mobile Blazor bindings. I think I saw in the chat, uh, somebody asked how complete it is. Um, it, mobile Blazor bindings is definitely not complete in the sense that it does not support as many things as Xamarin Forms supports, but everything that it does support works everywhere that Xamarin Forms works. So all your basic controls, your buttons and labels and stack layouts and content views, as well as some of the more advanced controls. Um, Shell is one of the ones that uh, also thanks to a community contributor, um, Lachlan Gordon down in Australia. Uh, Shell supports navigation and we have very rich samples that show how to use Shell with navigation and flyouts. And um, yeah, there's still a lot more to do and Part of why I'm here is not just to share that we've released a preview five that supports using uh, Blazor web assets with all the static images and things like that, which is a huge, also a community contribution from a, a guy, Jan Willem, and I, he told me how to pronounce his last name, Spoy, Sp Sp something like that. Um, fantastic contributor from Netherlands. Um, and 
we have a lot more coming and oh you can use skia sharp as well we have samples for how to use skia sharp so you get the rich 2d graphics uh in there and we want feedback on what else you're looking for so if you're a xamarin forms developer and want to mix uh some blazer web content because it's very rare that somebody has only a web uh, only a web app or only a native app most people want both the idea here is we want to have a technology that lets you uh, not only use the same patterns, so Blazor, mobile Blazor bindings and Blazor web, but actually use the same code, the same UI, the same assets, the same object instances throughout your application. And that's what mobile Blazor bindings helps you do by building on top of Blazor web and uh, Xamarin forms. So anything that folks want to use or want to do that's not available, there's a lot in there already, um, but I'm sure there's more that people are looking for. So how complete is it? I suppose it's a matter of opinion. Um, it's complete enough. I was able to build an application with it and ship it to the Apple App Store. So if you want uh, uh, an app for tracking my favorite recipes, <laughs> you can download an app that has my favorite recipes. Uh, the support for adding your recipes will come eventually. Uh, but for now, it's my favorite recipe. So it's on the Apple App Store. It's called Recipe, R-E-Z-I-P-E. -E. And the source code for that is on GitHub. And uh, it's built using mobile blazer bindings. There's no hybrid in it yet because I built the app a while ago, but I will add some hybrid features to it as well. So it's it's good enough for Apple, and that's a that's a pretty high bar. So <laughs> I have questions. Yes. All right. So uh, I actually was not aware that you had uh, provided the Blazor web view as a separate control for existing Xamarin forms. There's, by the way, there's 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 my recipes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> what what's your top recipe? Uh, buttermilk waffles, which actually is a recipe from Serious Eats. If anybody knows uh, Serious Eats, um, that's, nice. that's that's where you go to find recipes. So uh, no, you made me hungry again. All right, so this control, um, because I know that we have plenty of uh, customers and developers out there that that do embed web views in their native applications and then host content, whether local content or from a server. And, you know, the, the, the advanced aspect of that is communicating between the browser content and your native content. So with the Blazor mobile bindings and the hybrid that you showed, you know, you've built in the ability to share state and objects. Like it's kind of baked in because Blazor component model is the hosting environment, if mm -hmm. you will. That's my way of expressing it. But when you bring it into your existing Xamarin Forms application and then you host a Blazor app inside of the Blazor web view, how am I talking back and forth to that? Like, what are my options? Yeah, absolutely. So um, everything in mobile Blazor bindings and Blazor in general is based on the concept of some kind of host. Now, I know host is being generic host from Microsoft extensions is something that's being looked at for some updated versions of Xamarin Forms yes. as well. Uh, but here it's it's pretty intrinsic. So if we go to app.cs, now because this is a mobile Blazor bindings application, it's using the mobile Blazor bindings host to create the default builder where you start constructing things. You register your services for dependency injection. You add any additional assets that you want, file providers, other services. Here's where I'm adding that tracker state service that I showed that was being used both in the web content and in the native content. Here's where I register that. And then the host is the, the creator of all things. Now with the web view control that is hosted, I believe here, uh, normally because I'm hosting it in mobile Blazor bindings, it just picks it up through magic, you know, right. details. But uh, there should be a host, uh, where is it? Actually, there's two layers of host, of a Laser web view. This one picks it up automatically because it's being hosted because this is the laser wrapper for the Xamarin Forms Blazor web view. The Blazor web view that's used in Xamarin Forms has a settable host property where you just set it to your instance of a host. And the key things that are available on a host are the ability to get services. And let's see what's on there. That's a host builder and that's host is the iHost interface. If I navigate to that. By the way, anybody who doesn't know, if you hover over a var, it tells you the type name that it that is predicted to be. But you can also F12 on it and go to definition, and it 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 goes to the actual definition. It doesn't go to the definition of var. I don't know if anybody didn't know that. But uh, the, the the key thing here is the services, and that's where it will fish out any services that you use for at inject 
or the bracket inject, which are very common uh, patterns in Blazor. And you can use them within your Xamarin Forms application as well, uh, but, they're, but they're very intrinsic in the, the Blazor world. And so that's how you provide that. When it's hosted mobile Blazor bindings, it picks it up because it, it, it knows from where it came. And in Xamarin Forms, you just set the property in the XAML or C Sharp, you set it to your instance of a host. Um, it's just, it's a few lines of code and our samples, um, let me, I'll see if I can navigate to that on GitHub while we're, while we're talking. Okay, so, so I think I get what you're saying. Uh, essentially, when hosted within a mobile Blazor bindings application, the host is set automatically because it's wrapping that control and it does that work for me. Um, but when I host that uh, control bare bones within my Xamarin Forms app with my XAML or my C Sharp, I can use the uh, extensions host builder and I can assign a host to that web control which then gives me basically the bridge that I want. We usually call those cool. right web view bridges um, to be able to talk back and forth. Is there a is there a, a bare bones um, JavaScript bridge baked into this? I mean, it's um, basically the WK web view on iOS and yeah, Chromium so, on Android, right? Yeah, um, I do have custom renders for all the platforms, but it's based on because uh, there's some additional interop stuff that we had to do. Um, but it, it is using the standard, whatever each platform uses. So on Windows, it's using uh, the Edgium, the Microsoft Edge Chromium-based uh, WebView 2. On Andro on all the other platforms, you don't get to pick if there's only one, because uh, the platforms say, that's your WebView. And you cannot have any other WebView. Uh, but it's using the same standard ones. Thou um, shalt the, not. I'm sorry. This is the, Yeah, exactly. Thou shalt not if thou wants to be in thy app store. Um, this, this is where it's setting, it just happens to set it in code here. So here it's where uh, it's creating the host here, it's calling build, and then this is the Blazor Web View control that's in the XAML, and it's setting it programmatically in the, presumably the constructor, yeah, of main page. And it's setting the host, it's setting the Web View's host to my application's host. And this is, this is a Xamarin Forms, XAML-based application that is also using that same Blazor Web View component to host mm -hmm. some web UI. And again, it's just adding state and, and doing things. And, and if you knew up the default, if you instantiate the default template, it is all um, mobile Blazor bindings based, but you can follow these samples and, and use those same controls. Uh, but sorry, you were asking about um, interop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like JavaScript. Yeah. So like I wanna know if something got clicked or, um, or from from the native side, I'm like, okay, I need to put focus on something, and so I want to call a JavaScript method that's in the web view. Yeah, absolutely. So those files I just deleted from the cat tracker that shows how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, the, the, there's fantastic topics. Blazor itself, and at this point, it's it's standard Blazor web stuff that's been released for for over a year now. Um, there's tons of documentation on docs.microsoft.com. So if you search for how to do JavaScript interop between JavaScript and uh, C Sharp, it's all there. And once you're in the C Sharp world, because you're sharing um, state and instances between your C Sharp code that's Blazor Web and your C Sharp code that's running in the rest of your Xamarin Forms application, whether it's mobile Blazor bindings or XAML based. At that point, it's just method calls. There's there's nothing special. There's no interop at that point because it's just C sharp mm -hmm. calling other C sharp. You have a it's a reference to a class library. So just like you'd reference any library that does anything, you would do exactly the same thing. There's nothing special at that point. The only place where there's anything slightly special is within the Blazor web app. The if you want to do uh, interrupt between JavaScript or the browser, which is kind of you can think of it as a, a JavaScript context, the browser itself. If you want to interrupt between C Sharp code and that, that's where there's some interop. And there's a lot of interop libraries that already exist that wrap all of that stuff. Like I think things like Focus, things like that, probably somebody has some wrappers out there. Or if you want to use uh, browser storage or set cookies, things like that, there's wrappers for all of those things already available, either built in to uh, Blazor Web or as NuGet packages from the community, third parties, things like that. Gotcha. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, you've got a session at .NET Conf, right? Yeah, next week on um, 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 you think I you think I would know this? Are you Tuesday or, or, or you Wednesday? Mm, yeah, I think it's Thursday. Thursday uh, in Pacific time, three thirty p.m. So okay. that's that's some other time. 
it's the schedule's live. Go to dotnet conf. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the way uh, I am too. Just tell me when to show up on the day. Yeah, um, dotnet conf dot something. So I know there are probably some questions that came by that we didn't have time to answer, and we're kind of out of time. But um, we'll, we'll maybe get those to you, and and you can decide if you want to hit on those during your session. So anybody who is interested in this, definitely come to that session. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to, before we signed off, take an opportunity to let everybody know the December, assuming I, I I see no reason we wouldn't. Well, we'll have a, it is holiday season, but we'll have a community stand up and we'll be talking uh, in more depth about .NET MAUI and the .NET 6 wave of things and .NET 7 uh, and kind of where our strategy and plans are going. So giving you a bit of a heads up there. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw me mention this perhaps, maybe, I don't know, maybe you didn't, um, but that's why I wanted to mention it here as well. So we'll be uh, pulling together. Uh, you can always go to the .NET Maui repository and see what activity the Xamarin team has been working on there. But uh, we'll also kind of explain uh, what's going on. What are these code changes? Why are we doing these things? And what are we going to get in .NET 6? Should I use Xamarin today? The answer is yes. You should absolutely use Xamarin today. It has a long life. Uh, somebody at the very beginning tweeted something about things being killed or obsolete. And I'm like, well, I'm glad in .NET we're not doing that these days. We're keeping you all moving forward. You're stuck with us. So it's it's good stuff. Thank you, Alon, for sharing that stuff with us. It's really cool. I have Thank more questions, so but I'm going to have to badger you about them later. Absolutely. Oh, all right. Well, we'll see you, uh, see you in a month, Dave. Elon, yeah. thank you so much for joining. We'll uh, see you all on Twitter, online, wherever. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy, if you're in the U.S., enjoy Thanksgiving. Mm, that's Talk right. to you soon. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Bye.